I want to share with you a story. It's a story about Virginia Tech. And it's a story about a movement that we believe can change the entire world. But first, we have to back up. It was April 16, 2007, when Virginia Tech became the site of the deadliest school shooting on a U.S. college campus. And that's where our story begins. aftermath of the tragedy, we saw compassion and community enhanced here at Virginia Tech. But the question became, how could we sustain it? Student leaders began performing random acts of kindness. We wrote notes with chalk on sidewalks outside of dining halls that said, hold a door for someone. We passed out notes in lecture halls suggesting that more people should care. And at the same time, the Hershey Company donated hundreds of candy bars and we put pay it forward on the outside of payday candy bars and hand them out to hundreds of people. That at the end of the day, random acts of kindness, while we've heard it so commonly used, don't shift a culture. One person taught us that it's about intentional kindness. His name is Scott Geller, and for years, he's been studying the psychology of how to get more people to care. He's taken principles from psychological science and applied it to keep people safe in an organizational setting. That individuals were getting hurt all the time in industry, and he said, what if we moved away from policies and regulations and helped more people cultivate a culture where more people care? What we need is more actively caring. Actively caring is any behavior that goes above and beyond the call of duty on behalf of the health, safety, or welfare of another person. That at the end of the day, we all care. I mean, we see someone in a car crash on I-95 on the side of the road, we care. We see a, a student in a lunchroom sitting by himself in middle school, and we care about that person. We have friends and family who we can tell are going through a tough time, and we care. But caring is not enough. We have to actively care. We have to go above and beyond for other people. And that's exactly what we tried to do here at Virginia Tech. In the fall of 2008, a movement began on our campus. The idea was so simple. We took Dr. Geller's actively carrying wristbands that he'd been giving out for years, and we thought, what if we recognized people for actively caring? The idea was to take off a green wristband every time you saw someone go above and beyond for someone else. Hand it to that person and tell that person to pass it on to somebody else. The idea being that this would spread throughout an entire community. And that's exactly what it did. We heard stories from people that suggested this is really doing something. I mean, people could recall the moment when they received a wristband or when they gave one away to somebody else and it was unbelievable. But one story suggested to us that maybe recognizing people for actively caring could change the entire world. Her name is Allie Neal. And she was a student at LSU interning in Washington, D.C. She was on the metro. And she saw a guy across from her who just seemed really upset. I mean, he was having a bad day. Allie looks at him to smile, just to express how sorry she is for whatever it was that he was going through. And sure enough, the guy stood up and he walked over to Allie and he said, I don't know if you realized what you just did because it was so small, 
but that is the most that someone has reached out to me in the past year. He reached down to his wrist and he pulled off one of the 2,000 actively carrying wristbands that we gave out at Virginia Tech almost eight months before. And when we heard this story from Allie, we are reminded that small acts of kindness can change the entire world. Sometimes we think that it's so big, it's so impossible to change the world, we forget that it's about what we do every single day. And since then, we've numbered every wristband because we wanted to know how did this guy receive an actively carrying wristband on the metro in Washington, D.C.? And so on my wrist right now is 44,120 that people can actually track worldwide how their one act of recognizing someone else can spread throughout the globe. That people are sharing stories all over of helping someone in an effort where their car broke down. Helping someone and preventing, for example, a sexual assault. Helping someone that just was holding the door for somebody else. That if we got more and more people to actively care, the whole world could be a different place. As this global movement began and was spreading, we started to reflect back on the tragedy of April 16, 2007. And while there are so many factors that led up to this day, one sticks out to us. The shooter was a victim of bullying from the beginning of his school years all the way throughout college. And maybe if more people went above and beyond, maybe if we had a culture where people included one another, then the world would be a very different place. And so, instead of just reacting to tragedy, we thought, what if we proactively cultivated compassionate cultures in our schools? And so that's exactly what we tried to do. The idea was so simple. Students were in the classroom looking for other students actively caring. See, act, and then write that actively caring story at the beginning of every day. The teacher read three stories and selected one as the highlighted actively caring story of the day and selected the person that wrote the story and the person that did the kind act to both receive an actively caring wristband to wear for the day. Once everyone had worn the wristband twice, everyone got one to keep because we're in this together. It's about a collective effort. And so, as behavioral and psychological scientists, we wanted to know, how effective was this? How could we reduce the bad stuff, like bullying behavior, by just focusing on the good stuff? So we had students self-report. How much bullying behavior do you see? How much do you receive? And how much do you perform towards others? We asked students to tell us this during week one, before our actively caring approach began, and we measured students every week for the five weeks of our approach, and then on the seventh week when we took it away. What we see is a bullying reduction over 50%, and we didn't once talk about bullying. All we did was create a culture where more people recognize each other for actively caring, where more people share stories of people going above and beyond for somebody else. But that's not it. It's not just about bullying. A principal called us and he said that they, the students were so excited about this approach that they wanted a stained glass window with four actively carrying wristbands and that this now stands in a cafeteria in Northern Virginia because students said this is more than a behavior. This is an attitude. This is a value. This is a shared vision that we can all be a part of. And it goes beyond elementary school students. We've taken this to middle school students and high school students. And when we teach them the principles, the psychology of actively caring, they shift their own culture. At the same time as we learn, we, as we teach, we also learn. It was February 27, 2012, when Chardon High School experienced a school shooting. And students told us that compassion emerged out of their tragedy as well. But the question again became, how do we sustain it? And so together, our community has been working with theirs, trying to figure out ways that we can enhance ours, enhance theirs, and spread a global movement where more people actively care all of the time. So how do we do it? How do we increase actively caring? Sometimes we see this. Someone does something kind for somebody else, 
And it's an unbelievably positive exchange. But it's not easy. It takes competence. We've got to feel that we know how to do it. It takes a commitment. My friends, Joanne and Justin, they are committed every day to doing something kind for somebody else. It takes courage to step up to the plate to do what is tough in those awkward situations. And you know what? It takes bystanders. Sometimes we walk into a situation and we see someone do something kind, but we don't say anything. We don't talk about it. What if we started to recognize people for actively caring? See, act, and pass on a wristband to somebody else and watch it spread throughout a network and a globe? What if we got more people sharing, actively caring stories? We look on the news and all we hear is about the bad stuff. Facebook, Twitter, text messaging, we focus on what's negative. What if we all started sharing more actively caring stories? Imagine a world full of compassion. Nations without wars, communities without violence, organizations without conflict, and schools without bullying. Isn't this the vision that we all share? Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. decades ago spoke words that ring so true even today. He said, in this era of social transition, the greatest tragedy is not the blaring noisiness of the so-called bad people. It is the appalling silence of the so-called good. That if we want to call ourselves actively caring people, it is time for each one of us to step up, to go above and beyond, to do more of what we already do. And so I ask you to recognize others for actively caring, to share those stories that you see a friend or a neighbor do for somebody else because performing acts of kindness isn't enough. The second that we recognize and share actively caring stories, we remind each other that what was seem seemingly an individual moment is now a collective effort to cultivate more compassion in the world. Thank you.